Hey, howdy, it's Joe Friday at the Evil Knievel Museum, and I am inside Big Red, which has got a great story behind it. I uh, lived in obscurity for a long time. Actually, there's a guy that really ought to tell you about that. Let's go find him. Happy landing. So, in the 1970s, Max Truck donated this truck to Evil Knievel in exchange for sponsorship. And in his thank you card to Mack Truck, Evil Knievel wrote, Thank you so much for the big red truck. It gets just as much attention from the ladies as the Maserati, but it can hold twice as many women. Let me show you the insides. Uh, take you on a tour of my dressing room here and show you what you can buy with a few dollars if you're willing to jump a motorcycle over 19 cars. Got about three or four hundred shirts here valued about, I don't know, two or three thousand dollars. At any willing day, I'm depending on my mood, I'll choose the appropriate attire for the evening. This is where I get dressed, put up my leathers, suit up for my performances. I don't know how many shirts I have here, two or three hundred. Uh... It's uh, three or four thousand dollars worth of shirts. None left. It's empty. What do you expect? Okay, so Big Red sat uh, in several places decaying for many years. It was in Butte, Montana from the late 70s through the mid 80s. And then it went down to Arizona after the Robbie Knievel tour. Then it went down to Florida where it sat in Clearwater or outside of Clearwater at Jerry's for many, many years. And that's when the bulk of the decay took place. I started collecting in 2012, February, and one of my first goals was to, to locate his truck. So quickly figured out who owned it and where it was, and then uh, became friends with this guy, Rob Mariani. Years ago, when I'm a little boy in the 70s, I'm reading Overdrive Magazine. So my grandpa's had Overdrive Magazine. I open it up and there's a huge editorial on Evil Knievel's rig right here. This truck, I'm almost out of my mind. I pull it out of my the magazine. I put the pictures on my wall in my bedroom. And ever since that day, I'd watch for him on TV when he did his jumps. And I'd look for that truck, this Mack truck. And lo and behold, the Mack truck went away. His career went away. So did the truck. So Rob and I went after the truck, purchased it, and uh, made a phone call to an ex-partner of mine and uh, was connected with Mike Patterson. That's how the truck ended up being restored in Topeka is Mike took the baton with me and had the same passion. Now we find the truck, then it's Clearwater. When Evil last lived in Clearwater, he had the truck there, never got it restored. Lathan McKay enters the scene. Lathan's got all of Evil Knievel's everything, his motorcycles, his helmets, his leathers. He knows basically everything there is to know about Evil Knievel. He and his team at Topeka, historic Harley Davidson, a guy named Mike Patterson, they restored this truck, every single bolt that's in this. So, Three and a half years later, after getting it down from New Jersey, in 2015, it was completed. Went on tour. Well, after the tour was done with the truck, the plan was to start building the museum and have the truck as its main attraction. And this is where it sits today. The chassis, the motor's rebuilt. I mean, take a look at the It is absolutely 100% back, better than it ever looked. 100 local contractors made it together to, during the restoration and all did their own parts. The, the painting team was done by the dream team of Tex, Travis, and George, who, were, who was Evil Knievel's original painter. There's $75,000 worth of paint on here from House of Color. The original ramps that he used from Hollywood oh, Daredevil Days, 67 on, to Caesar's Palace until the ending of his career. It takes two forklifts to zoom these babies, and they weigh in excess of three tons. And number one, let me just take you back. Evil Knievel had Mac as his big corporate sponsor, and without Mac, Evil never got to the shows. This is the truck that brought his show on the road and then to the cameras and into the homes where guys like me, kids like me, saw Evil Knievel. So this is a safe that was found inside the Mack truck. Evil always was demanded that he got paid in cash before he made the jump. And so Lathan was really excited as if it was going to be full of gold. Unfortunately, when he opened it, there was nothing but 
dust. Dust. And rust. So the truck became a centerpiece to the museum, which then housed a collection of all sorts of jewelry and clothing, jump attire. Also videos, notes, letters, contracts, and of course, motorcycles. Hope to see you all soon. Happy landings.